Hungarian art historian, theoretician, networker and curator Laszlo Becke addressed star curator Harald Seemann at the time preparing Documenta 5 with a carefully constructed plan for an exhibition within the exhibition that not only consisted of mostly conceptual artworks, each related to football, but of a football game to be organized in the Pampas building of Fridericanium. In a quite surprising form, uh, action could have entered the museum's space. To talk about performative turns, as coined by for example, Erika Fischer-Lichte and Dieter Mersch in visual culture during the 20th century is common practice in theater and performance studies of a Western tradition, but haven't been debated so far in the context of neo-avant-garde art on the other side of the Iron Curtain, although Fischer-Lichte identified one of the performative turns in the event-based activities of post-war avant-garde, regardless of their geopolitical location. In a shortened form, one could explain the performative turn we are especially interested in and which turned up in the 1950s as a discharge of a classical understanding of the artwork and of the conception manner that marked the alteration from work to process or event-based aesthetics. As a consequence of this turn, works of art appeared in the museum slash gallery situation that blurred the border between subject and object. The appropriation of the artwork became the result of an experience that happened either through cognitive or through corporal sensual perception or through the mixture of the two. In a not so pejorative meaning as in the case of Michael Fried, one can oh, okay. Thank you. Good. One can equate this understanding of performativity with his space of experience the white cube represents. In my understanding, the space of experience in a museum slash gallery or even outside of these institutions had been challenged by a number of post-war avant-gardists, both in Western and in Eastern regions. It happens in the 1960s that experiencing art in museums slash galleries partly leaves the reserved theatricality of Fried behind and invites the mental and slash or physical collaboration. In our talk today, we would like to address the question how immateriality and performativity became core elements of neo-avant-garde art practices in Hungary. Through all through analyzing Becke's Hungarian Food Art Club, exhibition action draft originally conceptualized by Laszlo Lochner as the Food Art Project in 1970 that was sent to Harald Seemann in early 1972, we attempt to approach dematerialization as an international language of artistic expression in the Cold War era. Furthermore, we are interested in investigating the relationship between the rather marginalized artist community of 9 to 11 avant-gardists in Kadars, Hungary, and the 11 best international artists challenged by them at the landmark 1972 edition of Documenta. Christoph would in addition investigate the problematic of underground art social recognition, the irony included into anti-football, the paradox of institutional critique along with the role of dominant curator personalities. In my part of the talk, as I have already done before, I will bring into line some basic thoughts on the interest of Hungarian post-war avant-gardists in what Lucy Lippert called the dematerialization of the art object and how it could have influenced the conceptualization of the Hungarian Food Art Club. I do believe that there was also a performative turn in the Hungarian fine 
slash visual art scene that became more and more visible during the second half of the 1960s. The consequences are manifold, but more types of performativity can certainly be determined. Without intending to exclude any performative tendency in the Hungarian neo-avant-garde, there are clear cuts between so-called masochistic, sadistic performances executed by Tibor Hayas, the conceptualist actions of Miklós Erdély, and the surrealistic happenings of Gábor Altorjai and Tamás Szentjóbi. I would like to draw your attention to the latter two examples that, in my view, represent two influential strands in the history of performativity in the Hungarian visual arts. As the art historian and cultural theorist Emesha Kurti has outlined in a recent essay on the first happening in Hungary, this particular event of 1966 represented a paradigm change the end of modernist thought and the initial point of the new avant-garde. Kurti described the forces that were at stake in 1966 as negative, deconstructivist and revolutionary. According to her, the chaotic, elementary, activating and strongly expressive nature of the first happening was a consequence of a confrontation with experimental poetry, experimental fluxes like music, besides the encounter with early forms of so-called intuitive actions at the beginning of the 60s. It cannot be questioned that the performative turn caused by this particular art event was radical and also for the reasons listed by Kurti represent a special branch of performativity in the Hungarian new avant-garde. The chaos and surrealism of this kind of process-related art had only marginally to do with what Erdi, who by the way was also involved in the anti-football project, called conceptual actions. There was not only a general generational gap between happeners and the guru of post-war avant-garde, but Erdi saw the early happenings in Kadars Hungary as copies of the Western originals. He de definitely belonged to the first Hungarian artists practicing conceptual art in a performative form and represented a completely different implementation of the performative turn in alliance with the so-called Iparterv, industry plan generation, to which most of the Hungarian food art club members belong to. In Hungary, this last mentioned type of performative turn and the obsession with the dematerialization of the art object is attached to the emergence of conceptual art. Lachner's food art and Becky's Hungarian food art cup club, from my point of view, came up from this tendency, although compared to Erdi, they needed some more time to be more experimental and up to date because in 1969 he had already owned a catalog copy of the famous Live in Your Head When Attitudes Become Form, Works, Concepts, Processes, Situations, Informations, exhibition curated by Harald Seyman. Ed Day himself, through the catalog, to the conclusion came to through the catalog to the conclusion that at the end of the 60s almost all visual arts were swallowed up by conceptualism. It was a bit later, on August 4th, 1971, that Laszlo Becker sent out a call for artists to participate with artworks in his collection, acti collecting activity entitled Imagination, with which Becker's aim was, among others, to exceed the limitations of former exhibition possibilities and to map the current status of, of conceptual art in Hungary with an announcement that quoted Lawrence Weiner. You can see that on the top of the paper. But now briefly back to Seyman and the dematerialization of the art object. The subjectivity of art production wasn't the only noteworthy aspect about when attitudes become form, but it was the shift of interest from the results of art of, uh, fr uh, from the results of art to the process of art. 
Seemann formulated in the foreword of the exhibition catalogue that the artworks presented in Bern 1969 in mirrored the action inscribed into each piece. The same concept was promised about Documenta 5 at its early pre preparation stage that would become, I quote, a place for programmed events as spaces of interaction, as a walkthrough event structure with shifting centers of activity. The dematerialization of the art object meant for Lippert, who coined this expression infamously, not exactly the same as for Seyman. According to her, conceptual art was, I quote, work in which the idea is paramount and the, mater the material form is secondary, lightweight, ephemeral, cheap, unpretentious, and slash or dematerialized, end of quote. As the theater study scholar Sandra Umatum has mentioned, the title of Lippert's book was not the luckiest choice because all art needs to be materialized in a form or another. The performativity of conceptual art lied in its different format of materialization that was also to be found in the Hungarian Food Art Club's anti-football game, how Gábor Atalai used to call it. As a preparation to the game, the Hungarian artists held training sessions according to Atalai, about two to three times. One of those training sessions is captured in the photographs of Goda, Gyurgy Godányi. Immateriality lies not only in the playful, relieving movement of the body on the football field, engaging in physical activity, alienating respectively, transforming the conventional role of an artist. In a sport competition's character of a cultural performance, there is also a certain intended awareness that made Lochner call his concept a performance project. Uh, the football project of this artist seemed to create a context in which the position of art and football got in motion. By proposing a decisively dematerialized project to the documenta, Becker and the participating artist blurred several boundaries that traditionally, uh, traditionally defined the rules of art. Therefore, the anti-football project had at least two different readings. On the one hand, it questions the social practice of football and the sense of playing it, that is usually an unreflective practice, by transforming it into art. On the, on the other hand, and I would argue that this is the most more pronounced one, it levels up underground art to the social status of football that in the state socialist Hungary was among the most important coercive forces of society. In the state socialist Hungary, football stars, stars were legitimate heroes enjoying privileges without making crucial compromises with the state power. In this way, the project announces its claims to the recognition of society and provokes irony by the overemphasized acceptance of the social practice of football. These claims were in a clear, clear contrast with the real radius of underground art in Hungary, where artists could exhibit only among fortunate conditions in peripheral public spaces, but many times they were forced into, private, into, into the private sphere. To establish the above-mentioned ironic parallel, the anti-football project intertwined the values of underground art uh, with the values of football, as we can see in the motto of Dula Gujas' work, one for all, all for one. This reframing of the underground art scene with the football causes a humor uh, of the proposition by its impassibility, because the project inspired for a social position that wasn't even held by the official artist of the period, but which is comparable to the social position of the artist in the Western art world. Nevertheless, we can argue that this project is not only an ironic play with the idea of uh, the repositioning of art to the social status of football, but also a parody of football and its cult in Hungary. It is enough to have a look in the inadequately dressed artists playing football or recall Gabor Atalay's memories who remembered that it was like a primary student craze and they were running in the 
in the pitch as pell-mell. Beyond the critic of football as a social practice, and beyond the artist's self-legitimization through this institution, we should look to the anti-football project also as an example of the institutional critic. As Laszlo Lochner's football in the Museum of Fine Arts graphic series plays the football match in the most prestigious museum of Budapest, the anti-football project was planned to be realized in the foyer of the Friedrichianum. In both cases, the football disconcerns the unquestionable hegemonic spaces. Although playing football in the museum was a radical critic of the institution that is separated from the everyday life and its practices too, but at the same time, a football match played by unrecognized artists in a museum shows also the desires for museumification and canonization. As you mentioned, the anti-football project of the Hungarian artist wasn't realized in the documenta, but the mega exhibition wasn't left without a sport event. Uh, because Joseph Boyce organized a box match where he fought with one of his assistants in the Friedrichianum. This proves that the artistic projects which blurred the high and low, the past and present distinctions, were in the air in the early 70s, although these were already in the way towards domestication, domestication. Maybe the most thought-provoking trait of the anti-football project is its playing with the idea of nation and Hungarianness. It is important to emphasize that the individual works of artists don't really refer to this problematic, except the work of Anders Toth, whose concept proposed a football pitch that is striped like a Hungarian tricolor. The Hungarianness and its consequences are mainly present in Laszlo Becker's curatorial, curatorial position. At this, point, uh, at this point, it is important to draw uh, attention to the art historical genealogy of Becker. But before that, it's worth to uh, point the attention to this points striped, colored like the Hungarian tricolor too, in the proposition sent to Seyman. Becker was trained and mentored by the lineage of the Hungarian art history writing, which constantly struggled with the reconciliation of national, ethnic, and universal art. Becker, similarly to the football project, also emphasized the Hungarianness in the Tug war action between Czechoslovak and Hungarian artists in the summer of 1972 in Balaton Bogler, but in, in a text written in the same, same month, he wrote that we neither intend to be particularly Hungarian art nor to be characteristic. In our example, the discursive formation of the Hungarian Food Art Club is a striking event because in this way the underground artist who usually represented only themselves, took a position in which they, tend to f ten ten in which they, they framed themselves as a signifier, the representatives of the Hungarian nation, or at least Hungarian artists. As a consequence, in the project of the artist, don't appear as individuals, but by representing a nation that was far from the globalizing and individualizing art world of the 70s. The strength to strengthen the national self-identification among the possible additional materials of the project. In his letter, Becker mentions the audio record of the West German Hungarian World Cup final from 1954 that loss in Hungary was considered as a national tragedy. Moreover, the, this World Cup finals lineup resonated inspiringly to the context of the Documenta 5. While in 1954, Switzerland hosted the World Cup where the West, German, where the West Germany and Hungary played the final. Uh, in 1972, the West German castle would host the football match in which the Hungarian team would clash with the world team of contemporary art, coached by the Swiss Harald Zeman. In this sense, for the globally unknown Hungarian underground artist, the formation of a football team could serve as a self-emancipation with the help of the world famous Hungarian football. From this perspective, they used football similarly to the state socialist regime. Uh, for that, football was both a self-legitimizing tool and an instrument to symbolically stage the antagonism of the socialism and capitalism. However, by approaching it from an another angle, 
uh, we can also argue that these Hungarian artists ironically applied for the position for a position in which they could legitimate the state socialist regime. By understanding this contradiction, we should ask whether is it correct to frame the football project as something that aimed to challenge the rules of art of the 1970s. On the one hand, the answer is yes. The self-emancipation through the domain of Hungarian football culture made the artist symbolically able to challenge the 11 best artists of the world and capitalize from their position that in contrast with the Western artist, uh, that in contrast with the Western artist, the best Hungarian ones were forming a real community just as a football team. The project, in this way, could challenge the uneven east-west divide of the documenta, in which the artists of the Eastern Bloc were not represented, and create a democratic, meritocratic arena for contemporary art, like the universal field of football, where everyone has equal opportunities. The football project that was planned to be realized in the documenta, established in 1955, in the frontier of the Cold War to propagate the superiority of the Western art. In this context, the football project didn't frame itself as a counterculture initiative, but as a project that represented the whole country from the Eastern Bloc, and in this way, challenged the logic of the documenta that neither offered universal and equal opportunities for artists, nor recognized the nationality as their distinctive feature. In this way, the football project was a symbolic conquest in the hearts of the Western art world that should have happened through the reimagination of the idea of the nation as a community in which the underground artists are not only included, but are holding a special role. On the other hand, this self-emancipation, this self-emancipatory gesture of the football project legitimizes several institutions through which it reframed itself. It le legitimizes the imbalanced gender roles. Uh, men are, are the ones who are making both football, nation, and contemporary art usually. The quantified hegemony of the global art world by using the list of the top 100 artists that scores and ranks them, and, among natu and naturally among the 11, top 11 artists, six are from the US, and legitimizes, or at least imagines, an exceptional position for Hungary by declaring that their football match couldn't be played with anyone, just with the best 11 artists of the world. Thank you very much. Thank you.